Okay, we are recording our book chat, the Faith and Fellowship Book Festival Book Club with Olivia Ray. Olivia was one of our winners in the Angel Book Awards last year, first place winner. The judges really liked her book and I'm looking forward to hearing about it. So um, Olivia, you wanna start off just telling us a little bit about the book and a little bit about you and your writing life? Yeah, I'm just, okay. I just had to get that out of my view. Um, well, the book that I won with, I don't know if you can see it, is Devotion. And I even made up a sticker for uh, winning for uh, the Angel Awards. Oh, cool. Yeah. And um, what it was, it started out with um, four books in the series. And this is actually book number six. And originally, um, it's the Sword and the Cross Chronicles. I started out writing when my son, believe it or not, was in eighth grade. I started the thinking of this idea because I was reading some research, um, medieval research. I, I kind of am goofy that way. I'll get involved in research and then away I go. And I was reading about, and I'm sure it was a propaganda tool used to get people to pay for the Crusades, to be part of the Crusades back then. But it talked about this one knight who went and picked up a piece of the cross of Christ, which, okay, we didn't know, you know, that's probably not true. But he valiantly, they called him the bright knight, and he valiantly um, took over anchors. And so I got this idea, and I actually wrote the second book in the series first, um, Revelation. And from there, um, I was just talking to a friend, and, and before the publishing of that book, when it was going to be published, they asked me if I would write a novella. So I started out with a novella called Salvation, which was the hero in book two is Julian. And this turned out to be the hero and uh, the hero's sister in book one. And then and that was pretty successful. So I expanded that book and then it went to a four book series. And I thought, okay, I'm done, You're right? I'm all finished with that series. It ended after four books. But I left it kind of open and I didn't realize this. There were two, two other knights, I guess you could say. Um, one was more like a Robin Hood guy who appeared in book two. And then there was Theo who was in devotion. And he didn't come in until book four. And I started getting mail from people, you know, emails from people saying, what about this guy? What about this guy? And um, I thought, okay, I could write two more books. So I first took, um, book five was about Darren. He was the more like Robin Hood character. And then when I got to devotion, I, you know, because Theo in book five actually falls off the battlements and is terribly disfigured. And so I thought, well, how am I going to use this guy as a hero? And then I thought about doing a Beauty and the Beast in reverse. And what I mean by that is even though he was ugly, his whole personality, if you, you would see how he was in book, the end of book four and his, in book five, he was more of a rogue and he lived by the sword. And when he fell off the battlements and was disfigured, his whole attitude changed. He became meek, he became humble. And he realized he couldn't live, you know, make a living by a sword anymore. And he had to learn to become, I guess, a more educated man. In his mind, he thought that's what he needed. And then my heroine, Rose, she, you know, her, she had some bad experiences in her life. She didn't have a good relationship with her father. And even though she was very beautiful, she really was a beast. I mean, she wasn't nice it was kind of a mean person <laughs> so it was kind of tough writing her for a while just because you know you want your people to like your characters and I'm not sure she was all that likable so but it worked out and I have to say out of all the books that I wrote in that series 
I think that's the best book. I think that's the book I like the best. And I think it's just because I could relate to the characters. So there's the history behind that book and actually behind the whole series. So. Um, yeah. Is that your first series? That was my first series, yes. So I wrote those six books. And actually halfway between that series, I wrote a contemporary and that didn't come out until that series was totally done. But you know, um, it didn't seem like my audience wanted a contemporary from me. They wanted um, historicals. So I went back to the historicals and I started this new series, um, which the second book just came out this uh, June 16th. The first book in that series is A Life Renewed. I don't have the second book that just came out because the um, paperback won't be out for another month. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that that's at a different time. You know, I thought, I don't want to write in the 11th, you know, 1100s anymore. I want to write in Tudor England. Well, I didn't realize that that'd be taking on a lot more research. <laughs> So yeah, so I, I, I plowed into it and because I had an idea, I went to, um, and maybe you don't even want to hear about this book, but I went to London with my daughter in 2009. So that's how long ago these ideas come into my head. And I learned about Lady Jane Grey, who was the nine day queen between Mary Tudor and Queen Elizabeth I, which most people know. And she, her life was just tragic. She was uh, forced to be queen mostly by her parents and by the regent of um, the former king who had just passed away. And they kind of forced her on the throne because they wanted to stay in power. And within nine days, of course, the English people didn't want um, this woman that was like three times removed from the crown and they wanted the next royal succession who was Mary Tudor, which you guys probably know as Bloody Mary um, at the time. And uh, so after nine days, she was imprisoned in the tower. And then her father tried to come back and take out Mary Tudor again. And of course that was unsuccessful because I don't think a Mary Tudor ever wanted to kill, to kill um, Lady Jane Grey because she was only 16 years old when she died, but she finally wound up being beheaded. So I thought, well, what if, if she lives? So it's a little different series where the other ones are pretty traditional medievals. This one is a series like, what if, what if she lived? What would her life have been? So that's what I did in this series, or that's the first book. So Interesting. The Interesting. Book, yeah, the second book goes into the heroes uh, in my book one, his hero sister. So, you know, they just kind of evolve, just like, you know, anybody that writes, you uh, get to know your characters, they become family. Probably even more so sometimes than my husband, because he always says, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Locked up, you know, upstairs. I, I work in a loft in my, my uh, house. So that's where I hang out with my laptop writing. Now, your books are Christian fiction. Absolutely. So your, your characters have a, a faith journey, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you can just yeah. imagine with the Crusades what that would might look like. Well, each book in the um, Sword in the Cross series, it says right on the top of, on the book, like uh, devotion. I have a little thing. It says only God knows a man's heart, and that it basically revolves around how his his life changes. But I mean, one book deals. Redemption, which is the third book in the series, deals about a man that lies. And it says a lie is never the answer. And in this whole series, there is kind of like a God-like presence. He, you know, he's either an angel or is he, is he God? 
and that travels through the whole series. But absolutely, they're all Christian fiction. It always comes out that one of them has a faith journey. One has either fallen away from God, either the hero or the heroine, and they've all come back to know God. So yeah, it's um, it has to be. It's just, you know, for years I used to struggle about not writing. I mean, I've written a lot of different things in life, but it's just like, this is where I belong. You know, it's, it's not for fame and fortune. It's just for telling stories that are based with Christian principles. It's, I, to me, it's very important in life. So. Um, so what are the, do they all have one word titles? Maybe I, I missed that, but. Oh, um, in the Sword and the Cross Chronicles, yes. There's Salvation's the first one. Um, Revelation is the second one. And that used to be my favorite book. But that one, you either love it or you hate it. It just, it's a little different. Yeah, I've gotten some nasty e uh, emails on that one. Like, well, she really didn't become a Christian at the end. I thought, well, that book, she was working on it. So mm -hmm. it just it just is the way it fit and it should have ended. But that all the other ones, of course. Uh, Redemption is the third one. And again, it's usually like they stand alone. You don't need to read the first book or the second book or the third book to follow the story. The stories all stand alone, but there'll be characters from one book that goes into the next book. So, I mean, you could even read them out of order. Yeah, they are all one title. Then there's resurrection, adoration, and then of course devotion, which is the last book in the series. So, and my can oh, I have my award here too. Would you like to see my award there? The Angel Award. That's why I said I hope you know. I hope that every, you get a lot of people that enter because it was a joy for me to win that award. It really was. It validates. It validates your your writing. Um, Joshua Prayer. That's um, deals with a little boy. And of course, there's a, they're all romances, so there's always a love connection. But that story dealt with a boy that had fetal alcohol syndrome. Um, originally, I was, I don't know, I was a special education teacher for 26 years. And I worked with a lot of kids with FAS. And again, out of that, out of working, this story just came to me. And I thought, oh, I got to tell little Joshua's story. So. Mm -hmm. That's how that book came across. So I would like to write a sequel to that if anyone would ask me. <laughs> so are you a, a pretty quick writer or do you mm. take you a while? Everybody's different. I know how long it takes them to produce a book. You know, um, I have a friend that can pump out a book. Um, Laura Scott, she can pump out a book like every two to three weeks. That's not me. Um, the research takes me a good, sometimes, well, I, I have to research in between too, but that usually takes me somewhere at least four months, and then it'll take me a good six months to write it. If I, if I get out a book a year, I think I'm doing pretty good. I keep telling myself, well, now that I'm retired, I can work faster. That hasn't happened. <laughs> Not at all. So, you know. Sometimes I think I think I was more disciplined when I was working full time just because yeah, I've heard I, came home, I did the job, you know, I went and I did my writing. I knew what I had to get done for the day. And yeah, now I try to keep the same schedule and it was working pretty good. But then my husband retired and you know how that goes. So. <laughs> I don't yet, but I will. Yeah. <laughs> It's different because you have another body in the house and it's just different. You yeah. Know, for well, me. I do. My husband has been working at home since COVID and he's still at home, but, okay. but I watch my grandchildren, so I don't mind him being at home to help a little bit. No, um, right. Janice, Janice wants to know, do you want to ask your question, Janice? You can go ahead if you'd rather me than me read it. It doesn't matter. I just thought we were sending the um, questions 
by chat. You can, you can. Okay. Well, my question was, um, do you enjoy writing series more or standalone? Well, you know, Joshua's prayer was a standalone. And then when I, you know, got finished with it, this is what happens, you know, like you think, oh, I'm only going to write one book with these characters or with this town or in this time period. And then others just say, hey, I'm here. I want to tell my story too. So um, people seem to prefer series. You know, I, I guess it's just better, you know, to write a series. I, for me, you know, everybody's different. So, yeah. So that's, I prefer to write a series. Anybody else have any other questions? No, I, know, I know Carol writes a lot of books. She seems to write quickly. Carol, what kind of books do you write, Carol? In your, uh, mostly mystery and suspense. Have you had quite a few books out? Um, my 12th one, full length, will. Um, release in August. Oh, wow. Oh, Wonderful. Oh. And I know she had two release last year, two novels. So I can't quite and do that. <laughs> that's pretty good. And then I had the, I had the fifth book in my Appleton series, Cindy, released in May, I believe it was. So you had three? last year i had book five release in the appleton series okay and you prefer writing series too carol do you like to write series sometimes she has trouble with her internet so that oh okay it could okay. be let me let me type it if I find okay. Way to do that. Okay. Does everybody know where the chat is because we're kind of used to Zoom by this point, I would think, but Okay, well, while she's working on that. Okay. Um, so a, a question that you um, suggested, and maybe you partially answered that, but just speaking about the book of devotion, mm -hmm. what, what was the reason that you wrote that book? Is it a character thing or was there more yeah, of the I, story? I think it was. I think... Like I said, I, you know, related to it, you know, I didn't have the greatest relationship with my father either. So in that way, I kind of related to Rose and um, working through that book made me put that to rest and also helped me understand even why my father was the way he was. And I, I guess that's it. I think anyone that writes puts a piece of themselves into every story. So, and the funny thing is I dedicated that book to my sister. And when she read it, she said, well, you were writing about me. And I thought, well, no, but it, that she could relate to it. That made me feel really good. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much why I wrote it. I mean, like I said, originally it wasn't even going to happen, but came around your books have gorgeous covers do you know anything about how they were designed um kim killian designed the covers for me um <laughs> when it was only going to be a four book series 
she was the one that suggested doing it in colors, like the gold and then the uh, blue. And I suggested, I said, well, most of these stories take place during the Crusades. So I said, what about a shield? And then she came up with putting a shield and a sword. Cause I said at that time, I did not want faces <laughs> on my books. And I didn't want, I just didn't want that. And they were very nice complying for me. And they did, they gave me beautiful covers and then always a scene at the bottom. And I think the last book that devotion is just a gorgeous cover, you know, mm -hmm. of the gray on top. And though I do have a blue book, this is more of a teal. So I, I think it's beautiful. To me, it, they did a nice job with those. You want to hold that up for us again? So sure, sure. See, it's really pretty. I, I think it's pretty. See, yeah. like this is gray. And like some of these other ones, like this one, the first one is all gold. Yeah, and you know, this is all blue. And then this one's all green, well, greenish, the bottom with the hut. That's the hut where he meets our mysterious man, our godlike figure. And then the red, I was a little concerned about that one, but it turned out pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, and a purple. All purple. Huh. I don't know if you can see it's got a glare. But yeah, they 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 all turned out really well. I thought those covers were very nice. And now um this new series, I like the first book with this. I'm I'm interested to see how the second book because her hair is flowing down and wasn't kind of crazy about that, but we'll see how it looks. Yeah. So <laughs> It's good that you had some input. So, oh, yeah. 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 Well, uh, some, some. <laughs> can you, I don't know if you can see the chat, but Carol's, Carol made a comment there. Um, with series, I agree. Sometimes it's hard to make sure you have different personalities and events, but mm -hmm. I think I like them, the series. I think your covers are beautiful too. And she wanted to see one up close. And I didn't see your comment before I asked that, but yeah. we did yeah. that. Yeah. Um, well, I, I will say that, and that uh, that first medieval series, that still is the most successful series, I think, out of anything I've written, so. Okay, well, Yolanda, Yolanda has a question. Better sure. get her in here while she's here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, I want to double back to something that you stated uh, when you said that every writer has a piece of them in their books. And I think that is very true. Um, I found that, you know, there's there's something from me that comes into my, my storyline, whether I intend it to or not. So I was just wondering, is that something you intentionally do or does it simply just happen? You know, I think it happens, it just happens. I'll sit down and I always start with a, a rough outline. I mean, you know, some people are what they call pantsers that can just sit down and they don't know what's gonna happen. I like to sit with a rough outline before writing my story. I'll think, oh, here's where I am. This is where I'm gonna go. And it never works out that way because the characters lead you in a different direction. So, but yeah, it's part of you. And then you, sometimes I don't even realize it till after I've written it. Or sometimes I'm halfway through the book and I'm thinking, oh, this happened in his past. And that has, that's why he's acting the way he is. And then that's going back and, you know, rewriting a lot of it, but it happens that way. I agree, you know, it, it just happens. Sometimes I think I'm going to go a certain way or that I'm going to plan to put a piece of myself, but no, I usually don't realize that until I'm like halfway through the book or three quarters of the way through the book. So. Yeah, so would you say you're a, not a, as much of a plotter then as, as some writers? I do plot. Like I said, I always have a general outline. Mm -hmm. um, and 
but it never always stays on that outline. Um, the outcome sometimes comes out way different. I would never write the end of my book before beforehand. And I know some people do that. I don't write chapters out of sequence. It just doesn't work for me, you know? Um, and I don't force them, you know, like I said, here's my outline, this is where it's gonna go. And I'll follow that along until all of a sudden I'm not there anymore. <laughs> And sometimes, and, and I usually wind up exactly where I want to be at the end, but it's, it's just a different route. You know, like this last book that I wrote, it got way bigger than I thought it would be because usually my books run around 70,000 words. And this one was close to 90 that I just finished. And I thought, how did it get there? You know, but it did. It was just parts of the story that had to be told. Yeah, it takes as many words as it takes. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, you know, and that's just it, you know, they, they like to put you in a box, but it doesn't always work that way. So, Have you ever gotten stuck on a particular book in a, a particular place and, and have a hard time getting started again? I get stuck. And when I get stuck, I try to force it. And then I realize there's a problem somewhere else. <laughs> it becomes more work because I got to go back, find what's not working. Um, why isn't this working? And change it. You know, and start, it usually at that time, I'll go back, start in the beginning and start reading. You know, or I look at my notes because I, I do, after each chapter, I do keep a notebook. Some people do it on the computer. Some people don't do it at all. And I write down the bullet points of each chapter. What did I accomplish? Did this chapter move? And it has to, you know, what was the goal of each chapter? So, and if there isn't a goal, then I got a problem. And that's usually when I get stuck. <laughs> so I go back, fix. So. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> no, no. Anyone that has written a book or not even anyone that writes, it's not easy. It's not as easy as it looks, you know, so. Yeah, so you write full time now. Do you um, set, try. <laughs> you said you try to set us, keep to a schedule. Um, do you I write best in the mornings. Okay. Um, I usually get up, I'll give you my routine if I can follow it. Like I said, I have a husband now that's home. So he, he likes to, you know, come in and say, what are you doing? You know, but usually when I get up, um, I might do some exercise. I then spend time in prayer. It's very important. I don't think, you know, mornings that I get up and I don't pray and spend time in prayer, I actually, I don't know if any of you have ever watched the movie War Room. Um, that made such an impression on me. And so I thought, okay, I'm setting up my own closet to pray in. And I think two or three years ago, I started, or two years ago, I started that. And it's become a very, very important part of my life. And if I start with prayer, even if it takes, you know, even if I'm in there a half hour to an hour or whatever, um, my day will go faster and just be, I mean, things just work better, you know, if you start with God. And then uh, from there, I'll pick up where I left off and I try to keep the mornings for writing. And sometimes that doesn't work, you know, because sometimes you got to do a blog for somebody or something else. And if I have time in the afternoon, then I do what I call the marketing and all the stuff I don't like to do. So, <laughs> but um, like I said, with my husband home, I, you know, he thinks he should have some time too, and he should. So, I mean, this is what we worked for all the years is, you know, time to be together. You know, we're empty nesters. We have no kids here anymore. So they don't even live in the state with us. Both of them live out in California. So, yeah, it's a little tough. 
it was tough during the pandemic but yeah yeah because we didn't see that yeah so did that affect your writing i've heard a lot of uh, author talks over this year and that seems to be a question that comes up how did the pandemic affect your your writing it did it yeah i would say it did just because i thought oh this is gonna i first thought oh, i'm locked down for all these weeks that's gonna be great i'm gonna get something done you know that was my first attitude that i for i'd be forced to stay home and forced not to go anywhere and it doesn't work that way um yeah I don't think my writing schedule time changed. I just found other things to do to fill up the time that I wasn't writing, you know? So, yeah. And, you know, when there's only two of you bumping around and bumping into each other, you know, it gets a little stressful. So, <laughs> but we made it through. Yes, yes, we did. And there were some some silver linings here and there. And I think these on opportunities to do thing on do a lot of things online has been one of the silver linings. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I've made more connections with people than I ever did before, which you would think would be impossible, but in a way I saw more people by just looking at them online. You know, I mean I have a book club book group. And we would meet, we went from every month to every other month. And our conversations became more than just talking about the book and more than just talking about generalities. We came into, you know, talking about life and actually becoming more close knit. I do do a Bible study every week. That's very important to me too. Um, and that's on Tuesdays. And I thank God that we still had that going on during the pandemic on Tuesday mornings. Yeah, that was another thing. I would Every Tuesday, I would write in the afternoon because Tuesday mornings was Bible study. Yeah. So. Okay. I want to say this because we're recording because I don't know if it will show up in the chat. I just wanted to give your website is Olivia Ray Books. Olivia and the Ray is R A E books.com. So you can go there and check out uh, what she's doing on her homepage. Here's your most recent book, I suppose, here, Life Redeemed. Mm -hmm. Yes. That has as the other books are on there. It's, you know, just got to click through to see them. But Life Redeemed is the new one that just came out on my birthday. Oh, nice. Happy yeah. birthday. <laughs> Yeah, so that was pretty nice. I thought that was a nice gesture. So you were a teacher. How did you get interested in writing books? Not that your teacher has to do with it, but it wasn't your full time. Yeah, I wasn't, I, I didn't grow up. I didn't always want to write. That wasn't me. Um, I was, in, in fact, I was a special education teacher because I was a struggling reader when I was younger. I was, I struggled in school. I'm, you know, and I thought, well, I want to help people that struggled like I did. And that's how I got into special education. And I would say um, I had another group of friends that we would get together. Oh, we don't do this anymore. I can't even tell you what night of the week it was, but it would be once a month. And we would get together and we would do cross stitching because that when I was younger, that was a big thing. And we would do that. And I wasn't good at it. So I would sit and tell stories. And then one of my friends said, my real name is Denise, <laughs> said to me, hey, Denise, I saw this. They're having this thing with writers. Maybe you should go. And I thought, well, OK. And it was like a luncheon. And I just went. Um, and I learned uh, from, it was Wisconsin romance writers at that time. And all of a sudden I just fell in love with learning about the craft of writing. And I just went gung-ho crazy on that. You know, it took me years before I published a book. You know, I got a lot of failed starts here. I got a lot of books under the bed, 
but they weren't Christian fiction. So I guess God was telling me, you, you keep doing it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. so, Olivia, I'll say, but, and you finally got it right. So that was a long process. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It is a journey, just like life. Writing is a journey. Right. Writing is a journey. So. Okay. Any other questions for Olivia? Anybody think of anything? Well, I thought of a question, and it's after uh, you noted that your real name is Denise. That's and right. so I'm wondering what compelled you to use a pen name? And how did you come up with Olivia Ray? It's beautiful. Ray is my middle name. And I was going to write as Denise Ray and my daughter and some of my friends said, oh, you can't write under that's an old name, which I don't think is that bad. <laughs> and uh, then I thought, you know, Denise wasn't always a good person. And Olivia's really, you know, she changed her life around. So it's kind of like a rebirth from the person I was before it's and it was like with my journey with God so when I decided to you know I decided I'm going to be Olivia and that's how it came it's you know I just thought no Denise has changed so <laughs> I'm Olivia for writing I'm still Denise for everything else <laughs> so. That is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So she's a better person <laughs> than Denise. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what, but that's how the name came about. And Ray is my middle name. So, okay. Mm -hmm. My you. last name, my real last name. No, it's Sikash. And that's my you know, husband's <laughs> last name. And nobody's going to write under that. <laughs> Denise, I can't even say it. Yeah, Denise. I know. <laughs> and if you would see how it's spelled, you would say no. So, I always thought if I would write suspense, which I haven't, um, I would write under Denise Sykes because I thought that's so close to Sikash. And <laughs> no, it's not even close. So that's not going to happen. <laughs> Okay. Well, I would like to ask, um, first, I want to thank you for your time because this is uh, definitely, it's been a joy speaking with you. Um, this, as you know, the this book club is part of the Faith and Fellowship Book Festival, one of the extensions that we're doing. And it, the book club is something new that we're still Dylan, I think you might be our third or fourth author. Yeah, fourth, I think. Fourth author, okay. Um, so I would like to know, how did you first learn of the Faith and Fellowship Book Festival and uh, how did you become involved in that? Well, it was your contest. Now you're going to ask me where I saw it. I don't know if I can't say I wasn't searching for contests. It just came up. I don't know if it came up um, in Facebook, possibly, or Twitter. I, you know, and all of a sudden I thought, oh, this is a Christian thing. And, you know, like um, Cindy said, there isn't a lot of Christian, you know, for people to talk about Christian books and to get together with Christian authors or Christian readers. There wasn't any of that out there. And so when I saw this, I thought, oh, I want to give this a try. And now that I know you've got these book clubs, maybe I, I'm going to, you know, where you interview authors, I think I'd like to, part, you know, join you guys when you have them. <laughs> so. Okay. So that gives me the opportunity to say, you said that you signed up for our newsletter. So that's going to be a way to let people know that um, what's coming up, whether it's the book club, we're also going to do some workshops that are usually focused for writers. Mm -hmm. And then of course our festivals. So um, 
Yeah. So if anybody's listening to this later, make sure you sign up for our newsletter on our um, on our website so you can stay in touch and be informed and yeah, and let people know because it's it is a slow process of letting people know that we're out here and we're just trying to support um, Christian authors, connect them to readers who want to read their books and might not know about them otherwise. So that's what we're about. We're glad that you found us. I'm very thankful that you had me. I, I, I'm very humbled by it. Thank you very, very much. And I'm but, not sure if we mentioned this and if, if I'm repeating myself, I apologize, but it's worth repeating that Olivia Ray was the first, was a first place winner for the Angel Book Awards. And uh, we really appreciate, um, and for anyone, uh, I feel like I have to give a disclaimer now, like Cindy and I didn't judge the contest. <laughs> so, <laughs> we didn't hand pick her. We hand picked her for tonight, but we didn't hand pick her as the winner. So she won fair and square, uh, all on her own. And, and so um, we're just really happy to have connected with you and, and we really thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And I, you know, the gift of, to write that book, Devotion, came from God, you know, so give him the credit for it, mostly. But I, I thank you very much for having me, and thank you for being such kind hosts <laughs> for a small group. I thank you very, very much. You know, thank you for your patience. We, we are small. These book clubs have been small, but we're working on growing them so right well you know I I understand I know everybody you know has to start somewhere but thank you thank you so much yes Carol Carol says she loves your pen name and then she's going to check out your books and we hope everyone will do that oliviaraybooks.com yeah I'm going to check it out too yeah great Janice, and I know Carol does too, they're big readers. They read a lot of books. And uh, so we're, we're happy they joined us tonight too. Um, anything else or we'll, we will not tie Olivia up too long, Denise, but. Um, it's okay. <laughs> anybody have any other questions before we sign off here? I just want to thank everybody. I, I enjoyed it. Thank you for coming, Janice. All right, then I, I'm gonna stop recording. You can keep, um, there we go. That did not do it. That just turned off my video. <laughs> I'm so inept here. I'll figure it out here in a minute. There we go.